words can't express the pain a parent feels when they see the suffering of a child. I don't know why I did it. <laughs> now that's an admission. You know, Bruce Rivers, he's the criminal lawyer. Well, who is he? Bruce Rivers, he's the criminal lawyer. And who is he? Bruce Rivers, he's the criminal lawyer. And what he do? And he's gonna react to all the self snitching. Oh. Hi, this is Bruce Rivers. Welcome to another fun-filled episode of Criminal Lawyer Reacts. I'm Bruce Rivers, board-certified criminal defense lawyer, coming to you with my pearl handle pistol cufflinks, so graciously given to me by our content genius, Michael Rivers, who is behind the camera as we speak. Um, today we're reacting to an Oklahoma girl, uh, 20, 12 years old, getting arrested for stabbing her brother. And this raises a whole con a whole bunch of questions about juvenile law, trying somebody as an adult, and we'll kind of get into those issues as we as we tackle this. Uh, but before we get to that, guess what? This is brought to you by eSign.com. Doesn't that seem surprising that this would be brought to you by eSign.com? Let's say your grandmother is in your basement because she got kicked out of her uh, apartment. And so you're letting her stay there, but she's there with three of her other friends, and they are just terrible. You know, so you you need to hire a lawyer fast, but you can't leave the house because you got to make sure that your meth-induced grandma is not destroying your property. So you call a lawyer and you sign a retainer agreement remotely, so you don't have to leave the house. Keep an eye on your grandmother because she is one methed up son of. A so then you uh, you download the app, you get three free signatures a month, and then uh, you sign that, and then you sign all the other documents. For example, like uh, an eviction notice to get your grandmother out of there, and then you notify the sheriff. And you can do everything by e-sign. And if it's not e-sign, no one signs. So that's e-sign.com. And your grandmother, guess what? She's on the street again. That's e-sign.com. I use it all the time when I have people sign retainer agreements, especially when they're out of state or however. So. That being said, let's get right into this because this this does raise a lot of issues. And this is a little bit hard to watch because you're going to watch a 12-year-old girl in distress. So come here. Sorry. Come here. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. We're just going to put handcuffs on just for now. I'm sorry. Just pull up here. Where's the I'm sorry. Dad, I'm sorry. I don't know I'm what's happening. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Please. Sorry. Now, when when kids get it's I mean it's hard to hear a child scream like that, but what she's being arrested for is stabbing her brother, and I assume stabbing her brother to death. Now this is a twelve year old. Now in in Oklahoma, twelve year old is is sort of the cutoff point. You gotta you have to be thirteen or fourteen uh, before they can start adult proceedings against you and and what that means is you know there's a big difference between juvenile court and adult court juvenile court you're not afforded a lot of different rights you're not afforded a right to bail you're not afforded the right to a uh, jury trial and there's a whole host of things so she's 12 years old so she's under that age how old are you and what an awful thing for this family to, to be experiencing. 12 years old. Where's the knife? I was upstairs in my room and I threw it out the window. And it's down into the apartment right here. You threw it where? I threw it out my window upstairs. Right not, up not right there. It's the room. It's the other room. It's right behind the apartment. This so when you throw a piece of evidence out the window or whatever, they can use that as some consciousness of wrongdoing. Apartment right here. So where would the knife be on that side? Behind, right behind. Use yeah. the knife. Okay. I'm so fucking oh sorry, God. Mama. I'm so sorry. I don't know what happened. This is some demonic shit. Your, I'm hey, so sorry. What's your mom's name? What? What's your mom's name? I gotta go with him. I'm so sorry. I don't know what the f happened. I don't know what 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 happened. Come over here so we're out of the paramedics way. I don't know what happened. Kids do stupid things all the time, not knowing what the consequences are and not really appreciating uh, what they're doing. And e even killing somebody, it doesn't seem permanent. 
They don't have a frame of reference that you know a much older person does. That's why we have two separate systems. But in Oklahoma, you can be 13 and be treated like an adult. Oh, sorry. Hey, what's your name? And the reason they're it's blurred out is because she's and they're not stating who she is is because she's a juvenile. Sit crisscross on the grass, okay? okay? Just sit there for a second. You don't have the knife on you, right? No, I swear I don't. I'm sorry. sorry. I don't. I don't. Is there anybody else inside the house? No, it's just me, my mom, and my brother. <laughs> He's dying. Hey, how would I get to the knife? Is there a, the back side? I can show you. Okay. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> she doesn't know what happens, but she's so sorry. Those constant apologies are an acknowledgement of guilt. I really didn't want this to happen like this. This sucks. I'm so sorry. I'm probably gonna go to jail. I'm gonna live the rest of my life. <laughs> That's it, right, right there. there? Yes. Okay. Sorry. Do me a favor. Know. We're gonna sit crisscross applesauce right here. Okay. Which one is it? First apartment right here. Okay. Thank you. You know, and when you see all the lights, you see all the the cops and the paramedics and. I mean, it, it is traumatic just to have all that going on, even if you're not part of it. And to be part of it and to know that your child is, is uh, we have two child, children in distress, one about to lose their life and then the other one about to ruin theirs. Here. Stay there. It's right there. Stick your hands out like this for me. Do you have any cuts on you? I do. Where at? On my arm. Which, which arm? Both of them. My left one is just small cuts. Did you cut yourself? Yes. I think that my right arm just has the small cuts and then my left one has I'm sorry. I don't know what the fuck uh, Mom, and then Fire and Emsa was... <laughs> and when we get a case like this, or ca any case that involves video like this, we have to go through these painstakingly, kind of like what we're doing right now. Hey, real quick, I'm going to take you out of handcuffs and I'm going to take your hoodie off, okay? okay? That way we can see the cut that you have. Take your head off for me. <laughs> Is it just those? Those look old. Are they old? Um, this oh, those? One and this yeah, one, those are a little. This one, those are old. Do you this have any new? One that's brand new. This was brand that's new from one. today? Yes. With the same knife? Yes. Okay. Can you watch her for just a second? Do what? What was that? Can you, you feel how raw that is. Just, I mean, the trauma, just the absolute trauma that everybody in this family is going through at the moment. It's just palpable. Can you watch her for just a second so I can get in her glove? I got in her glove. I'm so sorry. What's happening? And, it, and if she's cutting, and if she really doesn't know exactly what happened, it could turn into a psych case. And, and basically, what I mean by a psych case is if somebody can't doesn't appreciate what they did or doesn't know right from wrong, it's a completely different type of case than a case that is solely based upon an act. Um, you have to, t especially if there's, you got a child involved, you have uh, probably some mental health issues. So there's definitely a different component to it than just a straight up killing. What's gonna happen with her? I need to go to the hospital. I don't know yet. You don't know yet. You go with the hospital. We'll come and talk to you, okay? Whatever happens, just be calm, okay? I, I don't know what happened tonight.
Does your arm hurt? No. Okay. It's not bleeding, so I think we're good. I'm going to stick your hoodie back over, okay? Okay. All right, let me clear my car. Clear my car. Parker, stick it in my car. Okay. Okay. Ready? We're going to get up. There we go. Let's go. And one of the things, you know, it's been a fairly recent development that that these body cams are kind of universal now. If you notice, sometimes they're for the officer's safety. Sometimes they're to make the officers be more honest. But it also collects all kinds of evidence, like like what you're seeing right now. This way. We're going to figure it out, okay? I'm so sorry. I don't know what happened. Now imagine you didn't mean to kill your brother. And you love your brother, but you killed him. Very difficult to live with that going forward. So let's just go through the process a little bit, uh, what, what she's about to face. They're going to take her back to the station. They're going to interview her. They're going to book her in, into juvie. And now juvie is, it's, it's jail. And there's clanging doors and, and there's all kinds of kids in there. And they have high school and, and you know, school in uh, jail so they can continue their studies. But you're not entitled to bail as a juvenile. And you, so then she'll go to court and then in all likelihood, the judge will detain her and have the case proceed. And then, you know, when it comes time for disposition on a criminal case, if, if they're not acquitted, you can have out of home placement, you can have in home placement, you can have a deferred sentence. There's all kinds of different things that can happen. But certainly with this little girl, a shit ton of programming. You have shoes or anything? No, just socks. Okay. I have stickers in my in my socks right now. A lot of stickers. Is uh, he going to the hospital? Yeah. I'm. I'm. We're probably going to the hospital. Okay. It's okay. So you were really screaming and I didn't know what to do, so I just ran out and then I came back because I didn't because I was scared. Can you work on calling crime scene? Yeah, I'll call crime scene. Right? Uh, Witten is texting you mom's info. I already got mom's. Well, I got mom's name and phone number. Okay. So um, I'll call crime scene. So she she says I walked in and my brother was screaming. I don't know what to make of that because she's super hyster hysterical. And she's not really making a whole lot of sense at this point. Uh, well, I'll step out of the car. <laughs> but they're talking about, and the cops are talking about getting crime scene people there to process the crime scene. So that means that they'll search the house. They'll, you know, block everything off. Um, they'll collect evidence, take photographs, maybe do some testing. All right, I'll be out here if anything, okay? All right. Yeah. How old is he? He's nine years old. Nine years old, okay. All right. I'll be right here, okay? okay. Just hang tight. Am I going to jail? You're not going anywhere right now. Will I be in jail? What was that? Will I, will I be in jail? Right now, let's just, you know, really calm down a little, okay? I don't know what we're going to do right now, all right? Okay. But right now, we're investigating. Okay. Take a deep breath, okay? I know there's a lot of things going on right now. Just take a breath. I don't know why I did it. <laughs> now, that's an admission. You know, one of the things, you, you want things recorded because you don't want the cops later to say something happened when it didn't happen. And if everything's recorded, you, you've got this. And what you have right there is, I don't know why I did it. You've got an admission that she did it. So that's very difficult to overcome. Now, here's the other thing. She's in custody, but he's not really eliciting a statement from her. She's, these are voluntary, spontaneous statements that she's making. And so he doesn't really have to Mirandize her because he's not, he's not 
initiating interrogation. Breathless. Let's not think about it. In fact, he's doing the opposite. He's trying to calm her down and, and to prevent her from saying any more. When I first came to school, our math teacher, he, he had cancer, so he wasn't at school for a really long time. And yesterday was his first day back in school. And I, I really hated math, but I started to like it because he was there. She's saying, please, God, help me. Like, what the fuck, you know? And these statements all are evidence. Is my brother in the hospital? He's in the hospital <laughs> right now, little lady. Yeah. Will he live? Pretty sure he will. There's the doctors. Doctors are all over there. So we'll take care of him. Your mom's over there, too. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Oh, my is never going to forgive me. Okay. And this is a good example of walk away. You know, nothing can be lost, honestly, from walking away from a dispute. Whether you're a kid or whether you're an adult, walking away from a dispute before it gets physical is never a bad idea. Take a breath. <laughs> And, he's, and this is good police work. I mean, he's just trying to keep her calm. Who watches you guys when your mom goes to work and all that? It's, it's, it's just me. Just you and your brother? Yeah, I babysit. Because I have, I have a two, I have a three-year-old brother. He just turned three in October, but he goes to his dad every week. He goes to his dad every weekend, but we got a day early today. Mm -hmm. So we just went to his dad's house. And <laughs> so you're le you're twelve years old. You're left to care for your nine-year-old brother and your three-year-old brother. That's a lot for a twelve-year-old. And I would, I would venture to say that I think even a 12-year-old is probably a little bit too young to have that kind of responsibility. I don't want to see him. <laughs> so he's at his dad's house, huh? Yes. Okay. What is his name? I already know. What was that? I already know I'm going to go to, the, to jail for the rest of my life. You are not going to jail. Yes, I am. Nobody knows that, all right? Okay. <laughs> you are not. Okay? What I did was super illegal. <laughs> we are going to get through with this, okay? So she says, what I did was super illegal. I mean, that, that is a, um, a total realization. And, and it's actually an adult realization. But... She's 12. Can we get through with this, okay? <laughs> I'm just scared. Am I going to be able to go back to school? Huh? <laughs> Am I going to be able to go back to school? I don't know yet. Um, right now, we're just calling people. So I don't know when. Possibility. Calm down, relax. 
A lot of things are going on right now, okay? A lot of things are going on right now, okay? Okay. Are the handcuffs necessary? I'm a good child. You're a good child, but that's just what we have to do. Seems like a complete another mood shift, right? But it really isn't because she's probably sitting in the car for quite a while. And now she's trying to figure out, you know, getting a little more comfortable. And, you know, you can only go through that grief for so long. And it's got to subside. It'll come back, but it's it'll subside. Especially if you're sitting in my car, you know. Uh, gotta itch my eye. I don't even know if my mom will want me to live there anymore. Your mom loves you, okay? Your brother loves they you, too. They won't trust me hmm? anymore. What are you talking they about? They wouldn't be able to trust me anymore if they what I did. So they would probably be too scared to even let me back in the house. No, I'm not, okay. I'm not saying that I will go to jail, but if I were to go to jail, how long would I be there for? So that's, it's kind of a difficult question. Um, so first of all, you're too young to go to jail. Juvie? So juvenile detention and jail, two completely different things. Um, Clearly a different officer at this point. Because you're 12, correct? Mm -hmm. So you got to be at least 13 to go to jail. Um, but... And think about that. Can you imagine a 13-year-old in an adult jail with adults? Because that's what happens. In Minnesota, uh, to be presumed certification, you have to be 16 and a crime of violence. The And, and what they do to certify you as an adult, they, they do an evaluation, a psychological evaluation. Um, and then if it's presumptive certification, you get certified and then you can challenge that with, you know, a competing uh, psychologist. Or if it's like on the fence, you can have a hearing on it. Or if they come back and say it shouldn't be certified, then the state can challenge that. I have no idea if you do or don't and how long you'd be there. Okay. Okay. Get that spelled off. We'll get you out of those handcuffs. Huh? Excuse me. Let's go through that door right there. You know, and I, I read the comments, you know, on our channel and you know, there's quite a few people that would say, oh, she killed him, throw the book at her, blah, blah, blah. I don't care how old she is. She knew better, you know. Taking a knee-jerk reaction to anything, I'm not, and I'm not talking about anybody specifically, but is is a very thoughtless position to take. Um, that's why, you know, a good seasoned judge looks at all sides and takes all things into account. So, And in the studies and the psychology of, you know, an adolescent brain, you know they're underdeveloped. Uh, they they really can't appreciate the the magnitude of what we're talking about here. They can't see. They don't have perspective. They're they're dangerous. They're more dangerous than a fucking toddler, because they can't see what I'm going to do today, how it's going to impact me tomorrow. And they and sometimes they lack the empathy, you know, for others because they just don't have that that life experience. Call somebody. <laughs> hey, Jill, how do I get in? Okay, all right. Sounds. I'm sorry, what was that? Yeah. <laughs> and one of the things they'll they'll do in all likelihood is have somebody who's really trained at interviewing children and somebody probably female, gentle. She's already traumatized, so you don't need to and and the meat is basically tenderized. You don't really need to beat her up. 
uh, to get out of her what happened. Okay, so I'm going to take you back here. Just want to get out of cuffs or are you up? Yeah, we're going to take you out of cuffs, okay? okay. Do you need the restroom? Actually, I could use the restroom. Okay. I need take to use the restroom. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'll sure everybody can use the restroom. I'll take it off. And before you use the restroom, I'm going to take pictures of your hands, okay? Okay. Lean forward. I'm going to take them Sleeves for me. Thank you. And clearly, the wounds on her hands, are, they're collecting evidence. Okay, you know, our restroom's right over here. Where's the bathroom? Yep. It's, sadly, we only have one. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry, and if you need water or soda or anything, go ahead. It's just the one seer. Um, I've got everything for her. Okay. Some, yeah. We're going to leave it on just for a bit. How was she handling right here? She was asleep. She was good. Does she know? No, she does not know about me. In other words, did she know her brother died? I'm not telling her anything yet. Okay. I'll let you do it. I understand. We're going to go this okay, way. I'm right here. You can go. No, thanks. I'll take this guy. I'll bring it with us. We're going to come over here. Your mom's here, too. They just pulled in. Okay. I'm going to kind of walk you through everything. And we'll just go from there. Um, and we'll just hang out in here for now, okay? Well, we're going to talk to your mom first. And then we'll talk to both of you at the same time. Okay. Do you want anything to drink? Do you bring a soda? I'm or good. water? Do you want a snack at all, Kayla? It's fine. Okay. Because we've got, I've got snacks. It's really cold in our building, so we have a blanket for you, too. Okay? Okay. And then, um, let me ask, are these the clothes you were wearing all night? Or did yeah. you change it Okay. They're going to want those, and then put her in some scrubs. And then... If you ever need food or anything, let us know. Officer Zhang, the guy who's here. Okay. I'm going to sit down with you if that's okay. Okay, so right now, he's breathing. They're doing everything they can. Uh, but it's, I was just talked to the doctor, and she was saying it's all good things right now. Oh, thank God. Okay. So, <laughs> oh, my God. I have so, both my kids tonight. <laughs> I, I, I know that this is a, a probably, I mean, it's I can't. I, year old daughter. I don't understand why she would do something like that. She's so I can understand. <laughs> What the hell? Hey, Sarge, I'm uh, with mom. Uh, what's up? I'm working on it right. Yeah, she just walked in. I'm working on it right now. All right. Okay, and I'm going to have a. Uh... Okay, Roger. All right, I'll call you back. Yep. Okay, and I'll send you his information. And, uh,. All right, give me one second, and I'll... Roger, I'll, I'll call you right back here in about... And here's the thing. None of this stuff happens quickly. And time ticks, 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 slowly, slowly, slowly. And they're there all night long. Five minutes. Okay, appreciate it. All right. I know, 142, Sorry about that. That was my supervisor. But I said, I cannot imagine what you're going through right now. She's never I mean, been, like, aggressive or anything. Yeah. It's not like her. Like it's like they bully each other like brother and sisters, but it's never they never like fist fight or do anything like that. So it was just completely out. He was in bed. He was downstairs trying to sleep. I don't know why he went down there. Like what the hell was she I don't understand any of it. All I know is I heard him screaming. Like the worst scream ever. And I thought maybe he was having a nightmare, so I started to try to wake him up and there's blood everywhere. And he said she stabbed me, she stabbed me. I was like, no, no. no. And he started going in and out of consciousness. And so that's what they told me to put him on the floor, do chest compressions. And How awful. How awful for a parent 
and to know that it's caused by one of your other children. I mean, it's a double loss, right? To just to see your child in pain and, and to know later on that the child's not going to make it, which I don't think we're at that point yet, but it's just, it's just heart-wrenching. You know, I, I've been there, you know, I, I've got two children, Michael, as you know, and Jacqueline is my other, my daughter. And, and with Michael, you know, he, he, I had to tell him when his mother died. And it just, it would, to see your child in pain at six years old was when that happened, and, and it's ongoing. You just, you really, words can't express the pain a parent feels when they see the suffering of a child. And I think every, I mean, that's universal. But this is going to be so doubly hard because it was one caused the pain of the other. And I couldn't find my daughter anywhere. I was screaming her name and she ran out after she did it because she was scared. And, uh... So right now she's safe and she's in custody with us right now. Uh, it is a really... Over like I, I'm. I mean, I just, uh, this is a very. Um, there's no words that I can tell you that's gonna. And here's the thing: as criminal defense lawyers and cops and and ambulance drivers, we see everything, everything. The, the, you have very few stories that people can tell me that will shock me because it, it just. We see it all. I mean, the human condition is that of from the, the most gracious thing that ever happened to the most depraved thing that that could ever happen. It's so weird. Why but would she do that? Those are answers we're going to be looking for. And yeah, that, like, it's just weird. They don't, I mean, they don't really get along that great, but they, uh, I just never would have assumed she'd do something like that. That's crazy to me. Like, she was like, I don't know why. It's just, it's just fucking crazy. I don't know. She doesn't even curse. Like, I don't know. It's so it's just, yeah, I can... She's not a bad kid. Like, she doesn't do bad things. Now, Mom's free to go. I mean, Mom does not have to stay there. She's not a suspect, and she's not under investigation, at least because we have, you know, an admission, and, and all the evidence points to the to the daughter. And this isn't the kind of situation where she needs to be careful about self-snitching, except to the extent that, you know, she leaves the kids with her, or leaves the kids alone, and whether... You have a 12-year-old that's of sufficient age and maturity to be watching the other two. That might be an issue, but I guarantee you she's not thinking that way at all. I mean, like, she totally in out trouble. Of, it was yeah. weird, yeah. What's her name? <laughs> it's uh, ex-husband you're talking about. This is their father? It's his father, yeah, Levi. They're talking about identifying information. He's on his way up here right now. And I called you earlier, and you can totally disregard that because now. I was talking now, to him, the nurse. You're totally good. Yeah, you. His number is 918. With Xander's dad and his grandma all the time. Like, they look at Jamie like that's their granddaughter, too. Like, she doesn't yeah. get left out. Like, I just don't understand why she would have so much anger towards him, especially bedtime. Like, yeah. It's so weird. I mean, we should have told him no. <laughs> he asked if he could sleep downstairs, and I said yes. I <laughs> wish I would have said no. Well, there's nothing. <laughs> don't blame yourself. There's nothing that you could have done differently. I don't really tell him no. <laughs> this night, I was like, yeah, fine. <laughs> I, was, I mean, there's nothing that you could have done differently. I mean, it's... it is so natural, so natural for to blame yourself on something like this. You know, you. We, we have a way of doing things, right? You get into a habit, you get into a routine, and you, know, and you don't really expect something like this is going to occur. And this is so far out there. There's no way you could plan for this or, or you know, protect somebody from this. It just is what it is. And, and it's not the mom's fault. But don't blame yourself for any of this. Protect him. I didn't know what she was gonna do, so I didn't know. Like, it's not your fault. I know, but I feel like I didn't protect him. Like, it's his home. He's supposed to feel safe. <laughs> well, and, and again, like, his I, own sister. You I, know that I, <laughs> he will never forget her. She will never. It will never be. <laughs> there will always be issues now between them. Like, what the hell is she doing? 
Well, it doesn't, I mean, she's 12 years old at that age. So you can probably, you can see this room. This is probably at the hospital, not at the juvenile detention center for sure. But you can tell, you know, there are going to be problems between them going forward. She doesn't know that he's not alive. And I think we're about to figure that out. You know, there's a <laughs> lot of things going on in the brain. She probably wasn't thinking. Hello. Okay, he's here. So I'll meet him in the waiting room. She's going to meet you in the waiting room, bring you back here. Oh. Yeah, this is the waiting room with the children hospital, the children's emergency room. Yeah, the children's side. Okay. It's the St. Francis Children's side, yeah. So real quick, I know that I'm the, probably the last person you want to talk to right now. But so what we need is a, to get is a search waiver for the apartment so we can go through, have our crime scene detectives go through and do a thorough investigation of this. Um, so you don't have to authorize us to do this, but, uh, I mean, it would really aid in our investigation. Here's the thing. She can sign it or a judge would sign it like that. You just, it's the middle of the night, probably whatever time it is, it's dark. You just call up the on-call judge and say, we need a search warrant. This is what the situation is. The judge electronically signs a search warrant. And so it'll, either way, it's just one less step that the cops have to go through. I'm trying to figure out everything that's going on. We know what happened. My daughter says she got a knife and stabbed him three times. Well, we need to find the knife and yeah. we need to do all that. Can I be there? Uh, hmm. Mom wants to be there. What is mom trying to... Does mom have some weed somewhere? I just don't know. I don't have anyone there right now. Well, there's nothing. It's not like, I mean, if there's any, like, we're not looking for any, like, I, I'm not saying, I'm just saying, like, like know, drugs or anything that. illegal. I'm we, just, um, it's not for that. I just don't, yeah, it's fine. I was going to sign it. I just. And here's the thing. Oh, it's not for that. Guess what? If they find it, they can charge it out. I just, I just don't have anyone that can be there right now. Well, and that's the thing is, there won't be any, like, because this is like, crime scene detectives that go through and it could even be homicide that goes through and I do have two cats there too. I don't want them to get out. And they're not gonna get out. They're okay, yeah. So your name is and you're only authorizing us to go through there. Okay. Did she not get the knife for you guys when Well she got where it was? Well if it's inside the house. She said it was in her room. Okay, well, so that's the thing. We can't just go in there. Yeah. Uh, so the only thing I need to get from you is your signature right here. Uh, here's a pen. Right here? Yeah. So it's important to get this to collect evidence and make sure that nobody else gets in there. I mean, she says there's nobody else that can go there. Well, they don't want anybody else there because they don't want anybody else trampling through the crime scene and uh, ostensibly destroying evidence. And then, today's the 6th. What, uh, what's your apartment? What's the... I'll give you guys uh, oh, hi. 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 You? Oh go back over there and give them some time. She was upstairs, he was downstairs asleep and she just heard screaming. Come down there and she thought that he was just having a nightmare until she saw the blood. Okay. So and shit. Did you hear that last comment? You wonder what's going on in a 12-year-old's mind. You know, somebody, you know, we were looking through some of the comments when this was originally posted on Law and Crime, and somebody made the comment um, how disturbing it was that she was worried about going to class, that she was worried about going back home, um, and a bunch of other, other things. And you know what? This is a 12-year-old we're dealing with. You know, it, their mind's going to be all over the place. They're not going to deal with it like a, a, you know, an adult. You don't have a developed mind. You don't have, you, I mean, you've got, what, what, when you're 12 years old, what's the most important thing to you? Your friends, right? So she's worried about that. She, and, and she is worried about her brother. There's no question in my mind that she is. 
but it, it's just an absolute overload of emotions and um, stimuli, honestly. Just there's a just an overbearing sense of things coming in and figuring out what's going on. And so it's understandable that, you know, she would have moments of um, what looks to be callousness, but I don't think it is. What we have is, is really a lack of appreciation, a lack of being able to really process and synthesize the gravity of what's going on here. And because of that, and really the permanency of what happened, you know, it was it was a temporary problem that had a, a permanent solution. And I doubt that you're going to get a murder one on this. They maybe could three stab wounds, so uh, so that's that. But you know, in all honesty, she'll probably be on supervised probation until she's an adult, and then she is let free after that. But the one thing she'll never have, she'll never have her brother back. The mom will never have this, her son back. And that's going to stay with her the rest of her life. And she's going to have to go through therapy like nobody's business. And if she was cutting before, which it sounds like she was, um, this could turn somebody suicidal later in life. Later in life. Because at every stage, you you develop a new appreciation. You you. Like, I, I, I am not the same person I was in my 30s. You know, I, I have a lot of life experience. I do things a lot differently than I would. You know, I'm not as impetuous. I'm a little more careful. Uh, when you're 16, you look at the world differently than when you were 12. When you're 26, you look at the world way different than you when you were 12. So this is going to hit her hard as she develops, as she gets older. And she's going to have to deal with that. And for a young little girl like this, it's going to be a long, 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 long road. And for the mom and dad, my heart goes out to them. It's very difficult for them to deal with this because they've lost really two souls here. They've lost her son and they've lost her daughter to a certain extent. They still, she's still alive, but she ain't the same person that she was. And she's not going to be the person who she could have been. Um, let's just hope she gets some therapy and this family heals. So this has been just our reaction to a 12 year old girl stabbing her brother to death and, um, and just the, the various nuances that happen throughout the process. We'll see you next time here on Criminal Lawyer Reacts. I'm Bruce Rivers, board certified criminal defense lawyer. Make sure you sign up for Patreon, follow us on Instagram, follow us on Twitter. And we'll see you next time here on Criminal Lawyer React. Bruce Rivers just broke down your case. He know all the charges that you about to face. You ain't coming home till 2058. That self snitching gon' get you put away. Bruce Rivers just broke down your case. He know all the charges that you about to face. You ain't coming home till 2058. That self snitching gon' get you put away. 23 hour lockdown, please is that my god.